Okay, everybody, thanks for joining this uh, Reef and Credify AMA. Today we have Ivo Grigorov and Alexander, I think it's Karatsinov. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Hi, guys. Good, it's good to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for, uh, for joining us today and taking some time out of your, what I imagine to be very, very busy day uh, to chat with the Reef and Credify communities together. And uh, yeah, and, uh, uh, you know, provides, shed some light on, uh, on Credify and what you guys are building. So before I take questions from from the audience, from the community, I just wanted to level set. Uh, tell us a little bit about your backgrounds, uh, whatever you're willing to share, and uh, and about how you guys got uh, Credify started. Perfect. Sure. Perfect. Ivo, you can go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, hi everybody. Nice to nice to meet you all. And uh, well, my background is. Um, purely financial i have been in the banking industry for quite some time i have worked both for central banks and for just traditional banks and uh, also uh, investment funds uh, for the past 12 years ever since 2017 i have been also into the crypto space more as of a hobby rather than something professional uh, in any case um, basically we have seen uh, some developments both in the crypto space and in the banking industry. And uh, that's how we decided to start with Credify. Perfect. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Alexander. It's good to meet you. And thank you, Derek, for the opportunity to present Credify today to the community of, of Reef that we very much appreciate. Uh, personally, I have been in private equity and uh, energy investments in particular for the last uh, 10 years. For uh, seven years, I was uh, managing an investment fund that was targeting renewable energy and energy efficiency investments here in Europe. For the last three years, I was uh, working and living in Amsterdam, the Netherlands. I was in charge of several energy projects there. And since the beginning of this year, I joined the team of Credify to make sure that what we are building here is going to definitely change the DeFi space and make that rich traditional finance that everyone so much needs. Terrific. That's great to hear. Uh, so let's go over to questions from the from the community now. Uh, I'm going to start with uh, one that just basically the, the first one that came in. Uh, what is his Twitter handle? I don't see it here. That's okay. Style of model. Uh, wanted to know in what ways do you think Credify contributes so that financial institutions can benefit from the advantages that DeFi offers? I think we've all been moving into this space, millions of us now, uh, because of better liquidity, better earning opportunities, better access to credit for the people who need it. You know, are, are you are you also uh, uh, enabling traditional financial institutions to to take advantage of uh, of the new technology that's being built? So maybe we should provide a little bit of more background regarding Credify and what actually we're doing. So in a nutshell, with the protocol, we are building a bridge between uh, lenders of uh, crypto stable coins and borrowers from uh, the small and medium enterprise sector coming from the fiat economy. So the way we have structured the protocol in such a way is because coming from traditional finance, we see that currently there is a huge demand for additional lending supply going to the SME sector. And usually the traditional banks will be unable to provide uh, the proper funding for such uh, enterprises simply because they remain either underserved or even if they receive a financing that would usually come at very high interest rates. At the same time, what we see in the DeFi space is that uh, it, it's very often the case that DeFi yields can be rather speculative uh, and eventually they would simply disappear during bear market conditions. And what we saw during the DeFi winter and the market nuke in May this year is a very strong proof of that. Before the market nuke in May, we saw that the APYs on stable coins on some of the big protocols like Aave, Compound, even some of the yield aggregators like Earn, they were in the double digits ranges. After the market nuke, that pretty much went almost to zero. We saw that some of the uh, some of the rates that you could get on, on the earn actually were negative when you take into consideration the cash management fees. So we decided that we the crypto world definitely needs a place where you can put your stable coins 
and that plays to be counter-cyclical to what's happening in the crypto markets. And that's exactly what we are doing here with Credify. So going back to your, uh, your question, the way we uh, structure our operations is that we're going to allow lenders to allocate funds to uh, small and medium enterprises coming from the real economy. We're not trying to compete with uh, banks here, actually, because there are already so many SMEs that remain underserved by traditional banks. And actually, that's the reason why there is a massive growth in the alternative lending sector. Uh, that is nowadays a billion dollar industry in the European Union and the US alike. So we are tapping into that niche of alternative lending for small and medium enterprises and matching that with lenders coming from the crypto world. And the way we do it is uh, actually structured uh, in, in a such a way that uh, we're going to be providing stability and security to our lenders and liquidity providers. So every borrower that comes in to our platform, they're going to be credit scored. We're using our credit scoring mechanisms that we have developed internally within the team, but that are also verified by Experian, which is one of the top three credit scoring agencies across the world. And they're aggregating mm -hmm. data from more than 1 billion uh, business in individual customers for, uh, from more than 40 countries. So we are structuring the operations in such a way that we're going to be providing maximum stability to the lenders. We're going to be decreasing the uh, risk of default for the borrowers. And we're going to be making sure that the APY we bring to the lenders is secured, is stable and predictable. Terrific. That sounds uh, that sounds really, really uh, awesome. Um, <clears throat> You just mentioned uh, about checking the credit score. Can you talk a little bit how you're calculating the, the risk assessment score beyond you know collecting all that data from Experian? Uh, I don't know. Experian is certainly not popular here in Canada. Uh, it's mostly TransUnion and Equifax. But uh, this was a question from, <laughs> from Nordman uh, in India. They, they want a little bit more information about the, uh, the risk assessment score. Sure. Sure. Uh well, basically, we have developed two uh, distinct scorecards, which um, at the end of the day, they translate into a probability of default. So for each borrower, they undergo the scorings, and then we have a probability of default, or whether or not the borrower is going to repay the funds or not in the period of the, of the loan which uh, he has requested. So we have the application scorecard which uh, basically looks at both quantitative and qualitative data uh, on the borrower, on the company itself, on the project. It's uh, quite on an individual basis. Then we have uh, different variables, both macro and microeconomic ones, which we take into account. It's um, all regressional models and statistics, basically. So uh, the decision making is uh, always based on the numbers and the statistics behind the model. It's uh, not so ever subjective. And um, this is how we're doing it. It translates into probability of default. We have our risk-based risk, uh, risk -based pricing. And uh, this is how we also calibrate the collateral value which we're going to be asking for in order to mitigate uh, the risk. Terrific. Good. Um, on that end, I have to imagine, you know, part of your model here has been consulting lawyers, making sure things are above board. Um, I'm just wondering how you're. Have you had any interaction? This is based on a question from uh, from Michael uh, in the Philippines. Have you had any interaction with any sort of regular regulatory bodies yet, or are you basically just taking advice of your lawyers and making sure that everything is above board and that you're building a uh, a compliant platform? Uh, now, as opposed to having to worry about um, somebody knocking on your door later. Sure, that's that's a very critical question, especially in the, given the latest developments in the DeFi sector, especially in the states. So, regulation is something that we hey, uh, that, that we take very seriously here at Credify. Uh, we have obviously taken uh, multiple legal statements from uh, various uh, tier one uh, legal firms uh, here in Europe. Another point that we should make so. To be clear to the entire community out there uh, when we're talking about kicking off our operations uh, we're gonna be using actually a guarded lounge and during the guarded lounge we're gonna be taking borrowers that for the time being are based in the european union 
That's simply because we understand how the legal framework and the regulatory framework is working here in Europe. We know how the macro and macro microeconomic trends are working and we feel very confident that we know how the system is operational here. Obviously, going forward, we're going to be taking in borrowers from other jurisdictions and other continents as well. But in order to establish ourselves, to put the boots on the ground, we're going to be uh, kicking off the operations here in Europe. That doesn't mean that on the lender side, we cannot take uh, lenders and equity providers from other countries. We're going to be open to all of them, with the exception of the usual jurisdictions, of course. So going back to your question, actually what we see on pretty macro, macro blockchain trend is that, you know, the states is becoming a little bit more aggressive towards blockchain. For China, I mean, there is no need to mention that. But here in Europe, the overall regulatory framework is very friendly. So we have certain legislative framework regarding blockchain technologies. We also have an independent body called the EU uh, Blockchain Observatory, which is actually an independent institution that is also fu uh, funded by the European Commission. And their goal is to actually introduce blockchain technologies into the corporate world just for the sake of uh, having that uh, innovation in place. And uh, we are very fortunate to, to be operational here in Europe from the, from the get-go. Obviously, we have consulted this one with the proper regulatory bodies across the European Union. And we don't see particular concerns for the time being. Obviously, going forward, especially when we expand to other jurisdictions outside the European Union, maybe the legal framework there is going to be different. But once you establish yourself and you have the proper capital and the proper backers to expand internationally, I think regulation uh, is going to be just part of the journey. And that doesn't go only for us, but also for some of the big DeFi protocols out there. At the end of the day, we're working in a rather innovative industry here, and the regulation usually is falling behind. Eventually, it's going to catch up, and we have to work with regulators just to make sure that the way they structure uh, the regulatory framework is in such a way that is providing extra transparency to our operations, but it's not going to be crippling them. Yeah, fair enough. I, I think it's really important that people understand that. I, I was uh, an elected official for four years, and uh, even being on the inside, trying to make things happen quickly, um, <laughs> wasn't simple and I know that uh, uh, staff at you know various uh, um, governments and certainly the elected officials as well they don't like to be dragged kicking and screaming into the future uh, for better or worse like they they you really got to coax them and educate them and uh, and all that so obviously if you have willing partners that's amazing but uh, you know regardless um, if we want to make sure that these new platforms you know we're all a part of building are are accepted uh ultimately that really comes down to educating and and working with those with those people to actually get the laws changed if needed so that we can uh either either they can accommodate this cool new thing that we're trying to make happen or we can fit into the existing regulatory framework depending on what's being built well, actually, it's very similar when you look from a historical perspective. It's very similar to the adoption of credit cards across the US. Initially, people started using Diners Club. It was something they managed to get on a national scale without having the regulation in place. So the regulation was always kind of lagging behind, but eventually it, catch, it catches up. And again, it has to be structured in such a way that it's just helping the industry is, and obviously it is protecting the users of such innovative solutions like ours. Terrific. Yeah, that's a good point to make. I I haven't heard Diners Club in a while. And then every, every once in a while I see the logo and I'm like, really, <laughs> does this thing still exists? Do people still have Diners Club card? <laughs> They've been around. <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah, it's just funny to see it every once in a while. It was far more popular in the 80s and 90s when I was younger. Um, hi, 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 from India. Um, it, it has a question here about staking. I want to expand it a little bit, but they want to know about staking options available for their credit token, uh, any incentives for staking. I actually want to talk a little bit more about just the whole credit token in general. What's its purpose? Would you, you know, like if I if if I own credit, I'm using Credify's platform. What am I using credit for? You know, and, you know what uh, what value and uh, and utility does uh, does credit the credit token have? 
Sure. So the, the way we have structured our tokenomics is that we're, we have designed the, the credit utility token in such a way that we're going to be incentivizing uh, platform activity. So for instance, if you're a credit holder and if you want to uh, land stable coins using the protocol, by holding the credit token, uh, you will be earning uh, higher APY, but at the same time, you will have access to certain credit portfolios and projects that are not going to be available to the general public. Maybe just mm -hmm. to take a step back because we didn't explain this one. So the way we're going to be structuring our operations is that we are going to be rolling out the protocol in three separate stages. In the first stage, we're going to be having our credit portfolios that are going to be ranked from low risk all the way to high risk. And respectively, the APY on each of the different uh, portfolios is going to vary with the risk that the respective lender is willing to take. What makes us really different from the other DeFi protocols out there is that we're going to be providing fixed APY on each of the credit portfolios. So if you want to allocate stable coins to our low risk portfolio, the minimum uh, APY that we're going to be guaranteeing is going to be 10%. Then in the second stage of our uh, rollout strategy, we're going to be having the peer to peer lending section. Over there, we're going to be incentivizing lenders and borrowers to negotiate directly the terms and conditions of their transaction. However, because we want Credify to be a stable protocol and we are here for the long run, every borrower which steps in is going to be credit scored using our credit scoring mechanism that Ivo explained previously. Right. And in the last section, we're going to be having trade finance, where the lenders and the liquidity providers will be able to underwrite letters of credits and credit lines for facilitating cross-border transactions. So for the first stage of the protocol, again, if you're a holder of credit token and if you're a lender, you have the higher APY, you have access to certain portfolios that the team put some extra efforts into analyzing, but also you'll be able to stake the credit token into our security model. The security model is one of our uh, layer for the three layer protection for the lenders and the liquidity providers. By staking credit, you will be able to mint and receive X credit on a bonding curve. And X credit is our governance token and is going to be uh, used as a means for distributing part of the fees that are generated by the platform. Also, going forward, we're going to be buying back some of our X credit in order to make sure that the price is stable enough. And by doing that exercise with staking credit, actually when you stake credit in the security model and you mint X credit, you're going to be burning the credit. So by doing so, you're going to be decreasing the overall supply of credit. And by doing so, you're going to be providing price stability of the token. On the other hand, if you are a borrower and at the same time you're a holder of credit, going forward when you have sufficient um, sufficient uh, track record and we uh, know uh, how the borrower is behaving through our own chain behavioral cards by holding credit uh, eventually you will be asked to provide less of a collateral in order to receive a loan also you're going to be paying less of fees to apply for a loan on the platform and again, you'll be able also to stake your credit into the security model uh, to take advantage of the yield farming opportunities that we're going to be providing. Okay, that's that's a great explanation. Thank you for that. You're um, welcome. Yeah, they, yeah, they, that makes it pretty clear that uh, you know where where the value of, of owning credit comes from. Um, <clears throat> Sorry, I was just looking for the name. Uh, Christopher from Greece wants to know uh, a little bit further down the line. Once you're actually lending money out, uh, the um, the repayments that are coming in, and maybe even the profits that are that are coming in through those repayments, are those automatically available for lending out again to another loan? Um, and and what sort of I guess this is more on the borrow side. Uh, uh, what sort of repayment uh, uh, schedules are you looking for, uh, are you looking to implement for borrowers, which, which obviously well, impacts, uh, you know, um, when lenders get their money back. Sure. Yeah, sure. Uh, well, on the first question, yes, you're completely free to, uh, you know, employ the capital once again, once you have uh, received the principal back. And as to the second question, it is a question of, uh, again, it's based on individual negotiations. Uh, in the peer-to-peer -peer, uh, phase, in the portfolio phase, again, it is it depends on the business and on which product uh, the borrower has chosen. For example, you can choose a revolving credit line, or, you know, for working capital, 
on investment credit. So at the end of the day, it can be a uh, monthly repayment schedule. It can be also just, you know, interest in the bullet payment of principal at the end of the, at the end of the, the at maturity. Okay, terrific. Uh, Anil from the Netherlands uh, wants to know, um, I guess, what about building Credify makes you really confident that you've got a recipe for success here? Sure. So the, the, main, the main recipe for success for every project is actually the people behind the project. Simple as that. And we are coming from a space where we have seen many SMEs that remain underserved by the traditional banks. And we, we see how usually the legacy financial institutions are thinking when they're looking into a particular uh, borrow application. So they still have this old school mindset, uh, mindset where if you don't uh, have a tick in the box, the respective borrower will be left behind. And our approach is different in terms of we are still very strict when it comes to evaluating the borrowers, but we're taking into consideration various factors, also some soft factors when we're uh, uh, evaluating and assessing the borrower's application. Also going forward, uh, what we really want to do and it's part of the, the roadmap is that the overall credit scoring process to be completely uh, automated. Uh, to integrate AI into our credit uh, scorecards. And it, it, even though it sounds like a science fiction to some people, it, there are already very good solutions out there. And we are very fortunate to work with two very credible IT vendors that are experienced in that field. They have been working with the European Commission on blockchain technology deployments. They have been also looking into AI uh, into different commercial levels. So we are partnering with these companies to make sure that going forward, our overall process is going to be completely automated and transparent to the general public, both the lenders and the borrowers when it comes to actually understanding why certain loan has been approved and another one has been rejected. Uh, also, not only the traditional finance is something that is important here, obviously, given that we are talking about DeFi, we have been in DeFi for quite some time. We have been taking the benefits of uh, yield farming and liquidity mining, and we have been burned a couple of times as well, unfortunately. And we truly believe that the DeFi space and crypto in general really needs to have that a uh, safe shelter where you can allocate your stable coins and to earn stable and predictable APY, irregardless of what is the price of BTC and who dumped and who pumped and so forth. So we truly believe that the space needs to have that connection with traditional finance and we're building this one. And just to mention the last one, what we really want to achieve here in the long run is to create uh, is to make Credify a gateway for SMEs that want to tap into the blockchain technologies. Now we're talking about only uh, financing opportunities. Going forward, we really want to look into how blockchain technologies can be all in incorporated into the day business of small and medium enterprises to help them boost productivity, innovation, and efficiency. All right, terrific. Uh, next question comes from uh arzifi in indonesia uh basically it's about the security of the platform uh you know what sort of processes have you guys uh put in place now and and going forward to make sure that the that the code you're writing is secure that the dap is secure you know the funds are secure etc um in, in credify because ultimately you know you might attract millions and millions of dollars, maybe a couple billion dollars uh, of assets under management there in uh, what I imagine will mostly be smart contracts or, or maybe some uh, some custodial solution if needed, uh, depending on um, on other business arrangements. That's a very, very critical question. And indeed, we put extra priority regarding our security. That's the main reason why we have structured our internal operations in such a way that we have our internal team of developers who have created the smart contract. Now we have created, we have hired an external uh, IT development vendor team 
Uh, the guys are extremely experienced. They have been working with the with protocols the likes of Harmony, Aave, Avalanche, and so forth. So now they are looking into the smart contract and they're providing some additional advice regarding multi-six, time locks, and so forth to make sure that the security contract is going to be as secure as possible. Once we complete that exercise, we're going to be uh, uh, partnering with some of the leading uh, smart contract auditors to provide a smart contract audit before we do the launch. On this one, actually, uh, one of our strategic advisors and early backers, uh, Charlie Hu, uh, who is in charge of Polygon China, has been providing us some particular advice who are the good auditing companies that we should use in order to make mm -hmm. sure that the smart contract is stable and secured enough, not only for uh, the, the general public, but also for our operations, our liquidity providers. And uh, yes, we have to be secured. That's definitely the case. Terrific. Good stuff. Uh, almost done here. We are looking at a question from Ferry in uh, Indonesia. Uh, you know, there are lots of great blockchain or decentralized projects launching. Uh, global adoption is a big problem, primarily because of the language barrier. No, not everybody speaks English. Lots, lots of people are getting a passing understanding of English every day, uh, or lots more. But um, you know, we're we're obviously not quite there yet. And personally, I don't feel like you know we we should expect everybody to uh, speak the same languages. Um, are you? Uh, I imagine you're launching in in English, but do you have any uh, plans to localize or or make? Uh, you know, Credify's platform available in other languages at some point? Yeah, definitely. When we are going to expand internationally and grow our operations to other continents, then obviously the platform is going to be matching the local language and cultural requirements. We're already thinking about this one because currently we're finalizing our race and the way we're selecting our partners and strategic advisors is that we are covering some of the strategic geographies. Obviously, uh, we are targeting VCs from Europe, the United States, but now we are onboarding several VCs that have very good exposure to Indonesia, Vietnam, China, Japan, and so forth. So once we start expanding to the local markets over there, we already have a point of entry that can help us with the introduction of Credify to the local communities, uh, local lenders, and borrowers as well. Good. <clears throat> Pardon me. Good. Uh, let's talk about a little bit about your relationship with Reef Chain. Uh, uh, what's his name? His, his or her name? Uh, Applog from Japan wanted to know about uh, the relationship. You know, what are you actually going to build on Reef Chain? Uh, obviously, when is that going to happen, and so on. Sure. So uh, the building of the uh, the migration to to the Reef Chain is is uh, happening in the next couple of weeks. Uh, we think we're going to be ready with the integration just before we do our official launch, which is going to be in November. Uh, the reason why we have selected the Reef Chain as one of the blockchain technologies we're building on is that we're having really similar mindsets with what Reef Chain is building. In a nutshell, what, what Credify wants to build here is a protocol which allows for cross-chain interoperability because we want to tap into the liquidity of the different chains out there. And what Reef Chain is doing with the Polkadot uh, substrate framework taking the best from different uh, blockchains and allowing users that are not so well familiar with DeFi to use it without any hassle. It's really that, it's, it's something really that makes us, uh, make, makes us having the same mindset uh, like, like Reef Chain. Eventually what we want to do here is with a click of a button to allow a DeFi user that is not that experienced to be able to allocate their stable coins. And we believe that with Reef Chain, it is something that we can achieve. What makes it really promising is that uh, the smart contracts being deployed on Reef Chain are exponentially growing. Uh, we are very happy that there are some uh, protocols out there that are building on Reef Chain having similar mindset. Like for instance, the guys from Hero Invest that are having a tokenization of real world assets. It is something that is very close to our hearts. Also, what you have done with uh, same coin, uh, allowing to have a stable coin for business users, 
for seamless digital payments. It is something that is really going to help our operations as well and even uh, manage and mitigate uh, some of the on-ramp, off-ramp operations that we have to do in order to uh, lend funding to the credit portfolios. So in overall, we really believe in the ecosystem that Reef Chain is building. And we think it's a very good match, not only from the technical perspective, but also mindset level. Good stuff. And final question. Um, this is, I think, a little bit probably beyond the scope of uh, at least where you guys are right now or in the near future. But um, Dong Fan Kong from Vietnam wanted to know when you make uh when you make a loan is the loan linked to any major exchanges as a third party or is everything self-contained within credify right now and if it is maybe self-contained right now do you have aspirations to to you know get liquidity or or uh um, offer something to centralize and decentralized exchanges at some point to help bridge uh those worlds Yes, currently, actually, it is contained within Credify. Going forward, what we really want to do is to tap into different DAOs and DeFi's because obviously these guys have extra liquidity of stable coins. And we know that they are looking for solutions that can manage this uh, treasuries they're having in order to provide them with stable and predictable API. And actually, that's we're very happy that some of the big protocols out there like MakerDAO, for instance, they recently announced that they're going to be investing into a solar park in the States. So that transition is already happening. That bridge between DeFi and TreadFi is taking place as we speak. Indeed, there are certain challenges that have to be addressed, both on the regulatory, marketing and, uh, um, and uh, technical perspective. But with protocols like ours, we're going to be making that gap narrower and narrower by the day. And eventually, when people are talking about TreadFi and DeFi, that's going to be all the same, pretty much. Terrific. Cool. Uh, I'm going to pass the, the the floor over to you guys because I'm, I'm, I'm all out of questions. And I think we've got a really good uh, uh, overview and even a bit of a deep dive on some topics of how Credify is going to work. Is there anything else, Evo or Alexander, you guys want to, to make sure the community knows about, uh, um, about Credify and, and uh, what you guys are building? Evo, do you want to take this one? And I'll follow. Uh, well, yeah, uh, basically what we want to what we want to achieve with Credify is, you know, like we want to achieve innovation and, uh, you know, true technological innovation in the lending business. So um, people can have easier access to funding so that they don't need to wait for, let's say, a week before their uh, credit application is approved and so on and so forth. Um, in my personal opinion, uh, traditional financial institutions, they have been feeling too comfortable, you know, that they have been making uh, more than enough funds uh, from what uh, for the past hundred years. And they're just, uh, they are not innovating anymore, you know, and uh, this is what we're trying to change. And just to further continue what, what Ivo said, with, with Credify, we really want to build a solution that is win-win to the complete ecosystem. From one side, you have the small and medium enterprises that are acutely looking for funding from the traditional finance markets, and uh, they're unable to find it. And again, that's the reason why you're having such a massive growth into the alternative lending platforms. But these platforms are really charging APYs that are high, on the high end and with with credify we're going to be providing a solution that is going to be working for a small and medium enterprises but at the same time is going to be providing this fixed apy to the lenders and liquidity providers of stable coins that the crypto world really needs and we are really happy to to, pro, to have very solid backing of investors and partners and advisors